You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Amelia. Now, we've had a few people asking for us to do a review of this one, so I'm going to get straight into it. In case you didn't read the headline, I've got the 2022 Kia Sportage in its petrol version and this is a top GT line trim. This officially is now the fifth generation of the Sportage and it's probably one of the most iconic cars we associate with the Kia brand and it's Kia's number one selling vehicle globally. So it's one that I'm sure they're going to want to impress us with. Let's dive in and see if they have. When it comes to the looks, I feel like Kia is a brand that identifies where the industry is headed and then just cranks the dial on its style. Now, when you first focus on it, there is a lot going on here, but most of the design elements actually focus toward the front area. There's a huge front gloss black grille and placed either side of it is a congregation of LED lights made up of the headlamps, daytime running lamps and the fog lamps. DRLs have become a real signature feature on so many cars. It's like each car has its own little unique stamp on it. And Kia here seem to have given us a nice little boomerang shape on the Sportage. The side has a strong presence and Kia says it pays homage to its sports utility history. With its sharp lines and aggressive looking stance, it resembles the successful designs Toyota RAV4 and the Hyundai Tucson have. Being the GT line, we get the biggest and boldest alloys and they are 19 inches. There's a mildly swooping back which takes you to the very sharp tail lights and probably, if I'm honest, my least favourite part of the design. I just loved what Kia did with the rear design of the new Sorento. So they had set the benchmark quite high for me here. Now, I don't mind the back of the car, but I do feel like that there are some elements that just could become dated quite quickly compared to some of the other design elements of the car, but I do quite like this little kind of tail here. It's a bit of a kind of cheese grater thing going on. Again, remove functionality and looks are based on our personal opinions, so be sure to share yours in the comments. There are three different engine choices with four different transmission options. Now what's important is that you really choose the right engine for your driving style. So I'm going to rattle them all off to you and explain the differences between each one. The entrance point is a 2 litre petrol, 115 kilowatts of power and 192 newton metres of torque. It's mated to either a 6 speed manual or a 6 speed auto and a front wheel drive only. Fuel economy is 8.1 litres per 100 k's in the auto and a little less in the manual. There's a spicier petrol option and that's the one I have right here. Which has a 1.6 litre turbo petrol engine that produces a bit more zest in 132 kilowatts of power and 265 newton metres of torque. This one, mated to a 7 speed dual clutch transmission, is all wheel drive and sips an average of 7.2 litres of fuel combined. The last option is a 2 litre turbo diesel. It produces 137 kilowatts of power and ox, carting 416 newton metres of torque. Diesel consumption is on 6.3 litres per 100 kilometres combined and this option is mated to an 8-speed auto and has all-wheel drive. So there's a really good range of engine options and all of them offer something a bit different, but it really doesn't mean anything until we have a look at the drive. The 2-litre turbo diesel is probably the perfect combo for this reason. You get good fuel economy and a nice amount of push on the line. Even with a car full of passengers, you still won't feel the diesel is underpowered. All variants of the Sportage have locally tuned suspension for the best performance on our Aussie roads. There's several driving modes that include comfort, eco, sport and smart. This allows you to choose between different versions for the right driving style. There's also an all-new terrain mode only available on the diesel trim, which optimises the driving dynamics for mud, sand and something we don't get down here too often and that's snow. Now the interior of the Kia Sportage is where it really steps up its game. If someone who hasn't experienced a Kia in a while looks inside this interior, usually the first thing they say is, geez, they've come a long way. And my response to those people is yes. Yes, they have. The first thing that catches your eye is a massive 12.3 inch digital driver cluster and 12.3 inch display screen. Now this thing is huge and in the GT line trims, it lines up all seamlessly and has quite a kind of cinematic feel. The infotainment screen contains all of your standard features like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a bunch of Kia apps. But the best part is a surround view camera and how nicely it displays on such a massive screen. The plastics are actually pretty good. There's just a few hollow areas. The design and layout is dark, but in a clean and stylish way that keeps it looking sophisticated while still functional. There's two USB ports in the front and two in the back, so four in total. Three are for the USB-C and one up front remains USB-A. Did find that the Apple CarPlay only works with the USB-A port and not the USB-C. Top trim gives us all the features you could think of, like cooled and heated seats, a panoramic sunroof and very cool ambient mood lighting. That could actually be quite a cool thing to train your kids with. 
Today's ambient lighting is set to red. Guess what mood mummy's in? There is plenty of storage space. You've got a little armrest here, spot for your phone there. It even fits my bottle, which is quite chunky. What I would have liked is just a little passenger shelf. I mean, I've seen them on a few cars now and I like it. The back seats also maintain that premium interior feel and have increased legroom when compared with the outgoing Sportage. The back is actually quite impressive. There is plenty of legroom. I mean, this is how much I've got with my driving position. Each side gets a little storage pocket. There are these little hooks here for if you want to hang your things up. I also noticed these things, which I guess are handy in terms of getting out of the car. I've actually just been informed that they are for iPads or iPhones or just a good old fashioned colouring in book if you kind of want to go old school. You get your little armrest with cup holders, a nice little mixture of leather and suede. It is actually, oh, and you, even, you get your own air vents as well. It's, it's a very impressive back section Kia Sportage. Being the top trim, we get self-opening and closing boot. Luggage space is 543 litres and we get a little luggage net here. Safety features are fantastic. I've already mentioned the 360 camera, but other noteworthies are multi-collision braking, lane keeping assist with line road edge detection, lane following assist, blind spot collision warning with rear cross traffic collision warning, blind spot collision avoidance assist with rear cross traffic collision avoidance, driver attention alert with lead vehicle departure alert, safe exit warning, and intelligent speed limit assist. Now I just wanted to mention the creme de la creme of the safety features and also the fact that those I did mention come standard across the range. Drive away pricing for the Sportage starts at just under 35k for a manual in the bottom S trim. Only one thousand dollars more will get you into an entry-level auto. This turbo petrol in the top GT line will cost $51,990 drive away, while the top trim diesel GT line costs $54,990. This has been a hotly anticipated release and Kia have not disappointed. They offer a range of features that many of their other counterparts don't and they do it with a level of refinement that is on par if not better than some of their Japanese counterparts. Thank you for watching Cartel TV. Now, we would love to know, what do you think of the Kia Sportage? I mean, would this be your pick in this segment? Let us know in the comments below.